so what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, particle and turbulence modeling of, of sediment transport. Um, Large-scale morphodynamic models of sediment transport require parameterizations of sediment transport processes. In the past, these have always been some amount of theory, but large amounts of, of laboratory flume work that has gone into these parameterizations. What I'm going to try to convince you is that by developing these models further, we can start to use them directly as, as um, experiments, in other words. So before I do that, I actually everything I'm, I'm doing is actually in open foam, and I just wanted to give a little plug to the open foam clinic. Um, it's very easy to to write code, right? Uh, open foam is basically a, a, a library of C++ code for for doing finite volume uh, uh, work such as this. This is uh, some work we've been doing in the Colorado River. Uh, my student Laura Alvarez sh will show you the flow part of that in the. The, the poster, but it's very easy to go to a kind of a sediment transport and vection diffusion equation, and this is how it gets coded up, very simply in vector form within open foam. So I urge more people to use open foam, go to the clinic, because you can very rapidly uh, develop simulations. Uh, it also has dynamic meshing capabilities for doing uh, morphodynamic dynamic model. This is a model, of, this is actually uh, windblown dunes on Mar in Mars actually filling up a, a crater. A student came to me and asked whether we could do that. And so there are these sorts of capabilities within open foam to, to rapidly develop uh, morphodynamics models as well. And it's all parallelized. Um, as well, it's very easy, you know, to couple the various, this, so this is a coupling of turbulence, right? Uh, this is a large eddy simulation of flow, right? The, a wave flow over a ripple, and it's very easy to couple that with now, for example, groundwater flow. And so what you're seeing is, here is of course the flow, and of course you've got pressure along the, uh, the ripple, and that's creating, the, what you're seeing there is the instantaneous flow lines of the, the groundwater flow. And so if you want to do hyperic exchange, uh, very rap you, know, you can really rapidly develop these sorts of codes within open foam. Uh, as well, this is, uh, I downloaded, and it took me about an hour to download, uh, develop a surface uh, within, within uh, this is NCOM data, this is of the white sands, and then uh, gridding, and so I've written it's very easy to, to add uh, routines to open foam. And so this is, this is a simple 2D, but it's easy to do uh, 3D uh, simulation. So this is a uh, flow over dunes in, in white sands. And then you can use that also to do uh, morphodynamics of, of dunes as well. OK, so on to what I really want to talk about, which is coupling large eddy simulation models of the turbulence with particle models to develop a, a simulations that we can actually use to substitute for uh, laboratory experiments. And so a lot of you know what the large eddy simulation is. It's basically directly at the scales larger than the grid, you're directly calculating the, the Navier-Stokes equations. But we filter those, spatially filter those equations, and we still have to parameterize what's going on at the, at the uh, subgrid scale. Obviously, the smaller the grid, the, the less you, the, the uh, subgrid scale modeling becomes important. And so the, the LES model of turbulence that I'll show you today is the so-called uh, the dynamic subgrid scale model, uh, or the dynamic Smagorinsky model uh, developed by Germano and, and uh, uh, Lilly. Uh, Again, the flow solver is based in the open foam finite volume uh, CFD. Um, and the advective terms are, terms are discretized with, with central differences. So this, the LES model from the open foam is coupled to uh, DEM, a discrete element or a distinct element model 
of all of the particles. And so basically on all the particles you're doing F equals MA and they're interacting uh, each of the spheres that, that are the sediment are interacting uh, and we use a nonlinear we use a nonlinear uh, Hertzian elastic contact theory for the interaction between the spheres. All of this is uh, coupled together so the, the, the lights this is the, the lights is the code base I'm using for the the DEM right that's the particle part and uh, this is coupled through this the so-called CFDEM uh, project we have the lights here and the lights itself is based on the lamps code from uh, Sandia National Lab and again the simulations that I'll show you use a, a Hertzian nonlinear formulation for the interaction between overlapping grains um, and so the the two code bases, the lamps or the lights with open foam are, are coupled together uh, in the CFDEM project uh, that the core developer there is, is Chris Goniva in Austria. Uh, the, the, there's basic four-way coupling between the particles and the, uh, um, the fluid itself and so mass and momentum are exchanged both ways. Although exchanging the, the uh, with LES, it turns out difficult to do the uh, mass terms uh, both ways because of the, the grid scale has to be actually slightly less than the particle size to, to do the LES properly. Um, both, both codes utilize uh, domain decomposition for parallelization and I've, I've tried it on up to 100 or 256 cores and have relatively good efficiency. Okay, so the basic conservation the equation for momentum is this, and so it's the Navier-Stokes equations right here. Here's your momentum term, and here's your your continuity. But then you have the uh, uh, the void fraction as well, which is your your alpha. And the other thing is you have this other term, which is uh, the term that comes from the particles when you're modeling the fluid. And so this term at each cell you're actually at each cell that has a particle you look and there's an exchange of momentum in that cell between the particles whoops well that's a uh, it's not very smooth but this is so this is a simulation uh, about uh, 12 centimeters long uh, six centimeters in, in uh, width and what you're seeing is a simulation of bed load sediment transport where you're directly calculating the turbulence at the same time as the, the you're calculating the particle motion. Now the thing, the thing is you can see that it's not a continuous carpet rather the entrainment happens by the turbulence and we know this from lots of measurements in, in the lab that bed load transport looks more like this than it is a, a single carpet of, of moving particles. So this is the, the exact same simulation and th this is the sort of thing we can't, do, you know, we can get kind of, you know, a picture of the moving particles by taking high-speed motion pictures in the lab, but we can't get at this sort of information. This is this is actually at where you have each individual particle you write in on that particle what the fluid velocity is at that particle and so what you're looking at over here is the actual at each particle what the uh, upward or excuse me what the vertical velocity of fluid is and so what you're seeing is these let me stop it for just a second so at an area like here, this is what we would we'll call a broad sweep. Broadly you have fluid coming down into the bed and when it gets to the bed what happens is within that broad sweep then you have smaller scale vertical motions that penetrate into the bed and that penetration into the bed of those smaller scale motions very important for the entrainment of, of particles. And so you can see I, I believe upward is red and then 
downward is blue. And so you have these areas right where this broad sweep is. You have a downward here and upward there. And it's kind of right in between where we see lots of entrainment of the particles. Well, that's very jittery too. But this is so, what I've done, one of the things I've done is started with, this is the exact same simulation I showed you before, but now this is increasing uh, dramatically just the, the mean flow rate through the, through the simulation. So I've gone from no transport to very, very rigorous suspended sediment on uh, medium-sized uh, grains. And so this is a simulation, direct simulation of suspended sediment transport using the LES and, and DEM approach. And again, we can get things like all the particle velocity as well as the fluid velocity. And so we can have the direct interaction between the, the turbulence and the motion of the particles. Um, so this is the sort of thing we could kind of get to before from lab experiments. This is just mean velocity profiles. And so the first video I showed you was this simulation here, and it's in that pack there. And so these are all the bed load packs here. And these are all the suspended sediment simulations here. Uh, so this is the typical log velocity profile when we're looking at the mean downstream velocity. And here with the suspended sediment, this is kind of typical. You have upwards, up in the flow, you have a log layer, but we're actually modeling the kind of the downward kink that we always see with uh, suspended sediment in the, the velocity profile. And here is where, for the bed low part, the particles are right here. And so the, the simulation, again, goes all the way through the, the particles. Uh, so we can get things like, this is those experiments going from no transport. Actually, the one with no transport isn't on this curve because there's no transport. Uh, and so we can do, this is like the Meyer Peter Mueller uh, equation. And then from here, we get into the suspended sediment. And so it goes way above the, the Meyer Peter Mueller equation. Uh, we can look at things like friction coefficients. This is kind of what you would expect from no sediment transport, the line down here, uh, you, just using the Nicaragua uh, roughness values. And this is the friction. As you start to increase the number of particles moving, you increase the friction of the bed. And so this is the increase, and you get a dramatic rise as soon as you get to suspended sediment, dramatic rise in the friction. And then it actually, from suspended sediment, as you increase the stratification, then the friction coefficient actually starts going down again. And so this is, the suspended sediment is directly calculating, right, the, the effect of the stratification on the turbulence. And so this is, yeah, this is a bit technical, but, but uh, this is the sort of thing that is just, you can't get in the lab, or you can get little pieces of this in the lab, but if we can validate the sorts of simulations that I showed you, we can get really rich information, such as here is the concentration. So this is for the suspended sediment simulation that I just showed you. This is the concentration, and so this is the concentration averaged over uh, planes, right, in the horizontal planes. Concentration goes down. This here is the sediment velocity, and so we can get the sediment velocity. Multiply the sediment vol velocity by the concentration, we get the flux, which is what we're after, and that's this curve here. And so, uh, sorry, I said this was suspended sediment. This is actually the bed load transport. But what you can see, the peak, so right here is the peak in the bed load. Look at what the sediment velocity looks like. Uh, it's very low there. And by actually experiments and these simulations, what we're finding is that we've overlooked a lot of the slower moving grains. Um, and we've really focused on these fast moving particles that we can see, uh, easier to see in experiments. And so, a lot of the particles that are actually making up the total flux are not doing this kind of traditional saltation. And so we kind of need a, a new paradigm for bed load sediment transport. 
And so this is from experiments what the velocity distribution of the particles look like. Nice exponentials again. Lots of slower moving grains. Uh, this is actually from the experiments, excuse me, the simulations I just showed you on bed load. Again, producing nice exponential distributions of the velocity rather than something, uh, you know, something like more like a, uh, a Gaussian centered around the faster moving par particles. And so one last couple slides here on these. This is the suspended sediment uh, uh, calculations that I've shown you. Here again, this is the concentration, particle velocity for the uh, suspended sediment, and this is the, the sediment flux. And so most of the sediment flux, of course, is occurring right near the bed. Uh, but if you go down here, what we can actually see is we can actually start to model particle stress. And so this is the extraction of momentum of the, f of the particles on the fluid. And we can see that distributed you know, in this area, really important in this area where the sediment flux is the highest. And so particle stresses are important in the suspended sediment problem uh, very near the bed. <clears throat> and so this thing with concentrations that we can get directly this is one of the biggest problems we have in, uh, suspended, in sediment transport and morphodynamics is that we really, we've got really coarse parameterizations of suspended sediment boundary condition. Um, and so I'm hoping that using these we can actually learn a lot more about the suspended sediment boundary condition because we're directly calculating it. And so this box here is it contains the middle 50% of the flux. So we're looking at the suspended sediment uh, simulation that I showed you before. But now what you're actually looking at is the vertical velocity written onto the particles. So this is the vertical fluid velocity written on the particles. And the little things here, this is swirling strength. And so it's basically a, a, a measure of vorticity. And what you can see is right in here, where the flux is the highest, uh, where you're having significant uh, extraction of momentum by the particles, it's also the place where the, the large turbulent structures are, are just dipping down into. Um, and it's the place for the stratification effects as well. And so you've got all those things in this zone where most of the flux is taking place. And getting at this zone in the lab is very difficult to do. Because uh, even with acoustics or obviously with op optics, it's very difficult to get information on that zone where we can get that with, with the simulations. Uh, just one last one. And so we can look at things like this is the, uh, the eddy diffusivity. This is your standard. K U star Z, uh, von Karman constant times U star Z. Uh, this is what you would expect with no sediment. Uh, then we can actually use the simulations. This is what you would expect with a stratification correction. And the stratification correction actually seems to work fairly well. This is what we actually get from the, the simulations here. And so much reduced because of the stratification effects and the particle effects, much reduced eddy diffusivity. And we can also get at the suspended sediment diffusivity as well, which is difficult to get. And it's actually, we can see in the simulations, much less than the momentum diffusivity. Uh, just to left, calculate the, uh, this is the Grady Richardson number. Um, and we can see right here in the bed, obviously the stratification becomes so large that Right, you're getting above a quarter, and so the turbulence would expect to be cut off. And so this is, then we could do the same thing for waves. So this is bed load sediment transport under waves. Um, and colleagues of mine, uh, Ron Shreve and, and uh, John Nelson had, had gone to Denmark and done some experiments in uh, 
the wave flume there at the, the Technical University of Denmark, and we're try I'm trying to run simulations because they have direct measurements of the transport at the same time they've made turbulence measurements. And so just started to compare results. And I just threw this red is the stress measurements that I got from the simulations. And this is the stress that they got from the flume. And so I think we're doing a pretty good job. This is the mean velocity. They had their measurements three millimeters above the bed. Um, they had their uh, measurements three millimeters above the bed, and this, so this is the horizontal velocity, and you're looking at it over a half a wave period. This is the transport of sediment at the same time that they measured. I don't have that on the graph yet, but the, the phase fits almost perfectly. The, uh, the phase that I get from these simulations fits almost perfectly the, the transport. Uh, last thing, this is their measurements of the velocity. And you can see early on in the wave, the, the, the period of wave that they, they chose actually wound up in the transitional range, range between uh, laminar and turbulent. So early on, actually, in the wave, uh, laminar stresses dominate. And then as the wave starts to accelerate, as the flow starts to accelerate, then turbulence kicks in and, and Reynolds stresses then dominate the, uh, the flow of momentum. And so this is, the pink is their measurements. And what I've done is plotted the mean with two standard deviations above and below the mean. Seems to fit very well the, the early laminar phase as well as the onset of turbulence. Um, and so we can do this sort of thing over bed forms. And so this is unidirectional flow uh, where we have turbulent flow over ripples. Uh, and what you can see, this is a bed of, of particles. And what you can see occasionally right near the point of reattachment, you'll get a, a packet of high speed moving fluid that'll hit the bed. and that that packet of, of fluid will move a few particles. And so this is, this is what's interesting. This, these are the exact same simulations. And so it's the same simulation I just showed you of using the LES-DEM approach. Here you can actually see the particles, but what I've done is put a slice through, and so you're looking at the fluid and so that is the uh, downstream fluid velocity. Th that is, the upper one is one millimeter above the bed. Most of the high speed fluid is right at the crest. If you get just a millimeter above the bed, you would expect, well, right there, that means the crest has the highest stresses. You're gonna have, if you put any sort of sediment transport model in there, you're gonna have the highest fluxes there. Well, let's actually get into the bed. So this is, a horizon, you know, this is a slice of the fluid into the bed, and you can see the, the particles as well as the, the fluid velocity. Once you get into the bed, right near the point of the, the reattachment, the, there's downstream, or excuse me, downward moving fluid that penetrates the bed. Well, if you penetrate the bed, you bring that fast moving fluid into the bed. And so what we see here is a lot of the fast moving fluid in the bed is actually much further upstream um, than it is when you look a millimeter above the bed. And you can imagine it's difficult to do these sorts of measurements in the bed. It's even difficult to do it one millimeter above the bed. Uh, but this is really key to, I think, what controls the, the formation of, of ripples and dunes is the penetration of these, uh, these turbulent structures into the bed that uh, create the entrainment. And so this is a look. This is the zero meaning, uh, re basically right at the bed. It's hard to tell exactly where the bed is when you've got a bunch of particles. But this is about zero millimeters. 
and uh, we can see that there's penetration of the, there's, there's vertical penetration of the fluid there. This very last little thing, which is just, we can do this through, we can do this through cylinders, we can do the turbulence through cylinders. Uh, this is basically to look at the flow through vegetation. And then we can, after we do the turbulence through the vegetation, we can put the, you know, the, the DEM model in, and we can directly model uh, the transport of, of sediment through vegetation. And when you do this, you've done this in the lab, it's very, there's, it's hard to tell whether this is bed load. You ha do have areas of suspension, and, but you've got lots of bed load at the same time. So, to summarize, last slide. Um, open foam, again, urge you to go to the clinic. Open foam provides a really comprehensive modeling library that I think can be used uh, for earth surface simulations. It's primarily a CFD code, but it can be used uh, for more dynamic simulations as well. I think it, uh, the main point I want to get, though, is the LESDM. If we properly validate this, Getting to a point, I think we can use this as parameterizations that we just can't get at in the lab. With the waves in the, uh, with the sediment transport, right, we can put any type of wave we want. We can put wave current interactions and have them come at an angle. Uh, those are all hard to do in the lab, very hard to do in the lab. Um, and so the other thing that we're finding just about the entrainment, last point, is that the Penetration of, of structures, turbulent structures into the bed, very important for the entrainment of, of particles. Thank you. Uh, Mark, that was great. I, uh... I noticed that your uh, maximum sediment flux for bed load and suspended load were sort of in the same place. And, and so my question is, were those the same grains? And, and more broadly, how did you define bed load and, set, and suspended load? And I'm sort of curious on your perspective on those classic concepts uh, from the LESDEM perspective. Uh, th there. I have no sep I mean, there was no separation. It just turned out that uh, when I got to a certain point, there was enough in suspension that I had to add a bunch of new particles. And so there is, the only difference in those simulations going from no transport to the suspended sediment is there was when I got to what I'm calling suspension, I had to add twice as many particles so that I didn't get a bare bed. And so the the dividing line between suspension and, and uh, bed load, the, the, the simulations don't care. And so that is just a pure, right, us deciding which is which. Is which. And uh, again, in a lot of situations, particularly when you're looking at uh, uh, flow under, you know, with ripples and uh, particularly under waves, I, there's a really not a clear line between suspension and, and bed load. Um, and here you don't need to have that, that clear line between the two. Mark, sorry. You, you referred to groundwater earlier on in, in your talk, but it wasn't clear to me toward the end if you allowed the emergence of groundwater to have some dynamic interaction on, on the entrainment of grains. Is that, did you? Well, uh, actually what you're actually, you're right, so the LES, I put that in there just to show what some of the capabilities of open foam were in terms of doing different, you know, coupling different simulations. But actually within the, the sediment beds that I have, right, you're modeling the fluid flow directly through the particles. And so you're directly modeling the, the groundwater flow, but in a very uh, limited zone. Um, and actually the, the developers of the, the CFDM approach have actually compared like Darcy flow versus, you know, flow through the particles and, and it seems to work very well. 
Um, from my understanding, there are some phase lag exists between hydrodynamic conditions and the suspended sediment concentrations, which significantly contribute to sediment flux. Um, uh, in your model, uh, it seems to me that uh, you simultaneously deal with these two. Uh, I just want to ask, uh, how uh, do you think about this uh, phase lag between these two issues? Well, well, so in the, the simulations I did, I, I kind of uh, answered part of that already. So again, the simulations don't care as to which regime you're in, but they do, they're right, the onset of suspension does seem to match very well, you know, what we traditionally think, which is you need vertical fluid velocity fluctuations. When U star gets above the settling velocity, the particles, that's about where suspension, and that seems to work pretty well. I, I haven't done, I've only done uh, one simulation under waves, and so that was bed load, and uh, well, two, or the very one I, I showed you at the beginning. And so I haven't really explored that with under waves yet. Oh, oh, certainly. Yeah, I mean, you mean the particles as well? Yeah. It, it, uh, well, when it runs dry, that's what, I mean, when I was doing suspended sediment simulations, that's what happened. <laughs> because I didn't want it to happen, but it did. So if you want to look at things like uh, abrasion, and uh, again, I think we've got to get past the, you know, single saltation hop modeling, and, and particularly when we're doing things like abrasion. Thanks.